What's up, everybody? It is Shenanigan from Shenanigan Plays, and today I'm going to talk about what's been going on with the Star Wars Outlaws. We got the story trailer, but I'm going to talk about prices, the things you get with it, and kind of people need to chill out with the wording, but we're going to jump into it. So last week we got the Star Wars Outlaws story trailer and I'm really excited. I think within the second frame I was totally on board because we saw Crimson Dawn. I did think that was Kira at first, but now kind of reflecting, obviously speculating all on Twitter and everything. And then later on Game Informer that we got a image of Kira. I think that's one of her kind of handmaidens, minions, whatever. Um, but I'm so excited that, I mean, you can't have the underworld and the scum and villainy without Crimson Dawn, which now, as we kind of know from the end of Solo and, um, from various comics, that Kira is quite a player in that. So I'm really excited about it. But of course, let's just jump right into it and let's talk about the various things that are coming, um, it was released the kind of the prices i'm going to be doing it in pounds because i live in the uk but these are kind of the tiers they're broken down it's interesting because i was just watching another channel that said that uh you could get the standard edition for 16 or uh, for 59 pounds but i'm seeing it here on playstation for 69 but then there's also the gold edition which is 104 and then the ultimate edition which is 119. now i will be honest my first reaction is a bit woof we're gonna talk about prices first and then we'll get into the content because i have different feelings for different things so for the prices i definitely get people are like woof unfortunately that's kind of part of the course now 69 pound is about what we're sitting at for when a game releases you know 89 for like the next one so i mean going from 69 to 104 that is a bit of a jump from going from standard to gold um, I get that, but then it's interesting going from gold to ultimate, if I'm kind of doing my rough math, it's not as big of a jump as it is between standard and gold. And uh, I think, I mean, it kind of boils down to what editions you are getting. My thoughts are this. I, I hear what people have, what they're saying about the prices and things, but like for me, for example, I knew this game was coming. I knew that I wanted to play it on day one. Now, I will be honest, I don't care about playing something early. I don't like that idea. I don't like that, especially if you're getting a digital version by giving a perk different than like a physical, but it does make it quite difficult then if you want a physical edition, because does that mean you're going to get the game three days early? You know what I mean? It's, it's a bit bizarre. So I don't know how I don't like that. Oh, well, one of the perks you get is getting it three days early. I know Suicide Squad did this too. I don't care about that. Like, I just wanted to be able to play it on day one. I also understand what people are saying that, you know, why would you have a season pass on a single player? But even with the season pass, I'm okay. What I'm not okay with is the day one of the Jabba's mission. I'm going to break that down in a second. Because I do think certain, quote, news accounts are spreading, like misinformation and people are really getting their ass in their hands and thinking that you completely can't play with Jabba and it's behind a paywall when that's not the case. But what I don't like is, yeah, I, I don't understand if you have a DLC that people can play on day one, why have that then as a perk? Like, I understand if there's going to be f future content, like we just happened to get the season pass for Mortal Kombat, but we did get it like at game for £20. It was still sealed and it just worked out. Um, so there is that if you are not bothered on playing for the first, on the first day or whatever, absolutely wait until it's cheaper, you know, do that because then you're still able to play a, hopefully a fantastic game. But for me, I knew this game was coming. I'm willing to save to pay for the extra bits. Now, what I'm waiting for, the reason why I haven't pre-ordered anything yet is that I'm waiting for a physical because like I know Ubisoft does like for like Assassin's Creed and Avatar they had a lot of cool kind of collector's editions and if I get like a cool like Nyx statue or diorama or something I'm gonna do that but again it runs into that weird well it releases three days early so if you get a collector's edition does that mean you're gonna get the disc of the game three days early and then, of course, you're relying on your couriers like DPD and every to actually do it correctly. But um, that's kind of where I am with that. Now, let's talk about this Jabba 
mission because I think, again, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to give the rage baiting websites credence or uh, a platform. But IGN did pretty much just had pretty much just had the headline of like, Jabba the Hutt is behind a paywall. No. Shame. Shame. Because, of course, because nobody reads the actual articles. Everyone in the comments is like, why would you even feature him in the trailer? You know, I'm not going to get this game now, blah, 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 blah. Guys, look at the wording. It's a mission. Mission. You, there's, you are still going to be able to do things and speak to him and do all like the, you know, what's it, influence, whatever, within the game. Um, I really don't think it's like, oh, nope, sorry, you can't go to Moss, you know, Moss Eisley and, you know, Tatooine, you know, because, oh, yep, that whole planet and that whole division is behind a paywall. No. I, I think, unfortunately, that maybe the Star Wars Outlaws official account needs to come out with some clarification because I am concerned because people are just not looking into this are just going to immediately go, oh, well, if I can't, you know play with job of the hut in this game then i'm not gonna get it like it's that same misinformation that yes battlefront 2 had about two years of loot crates within the last three years of its five year run there was none of that and there's still people to this day they're just like oh that was play to win it's 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 that first impression that you've got to get people on board otherwise it's going to have issues but everybody please just take a deep breath Please stop spreading misinformation. However, I'm with you. I don't agree. I don't understand why if you have, you know, a day one DLC, just put it in the game or just release it later. Like, but I think again, because everything's now these digital, what can you give digital, you know, special versions. But yeah, so I want just to make that clear. I'm not poo-pooing people who are a bit outraged. It was just more there's certain aspects that's like, okay, everyone take a deep breath. It's all going to be okay. But that's just kind of my thoughts on this. A bit spicy, but also please be kind to like the developers and everything. Like it's not their decision on the price model and everything. They just make the content. They don't sit there and go to Ubisoft execs and go, oh yeah, let's, you know, this cosmetic I made um yeah we're gonna we're, well, let's make that like 20 pound extra like no no <laughs> so please just be kind to each other thank you for checking out this video for something more on an uplifting note i have just done a video about uh the fortnite star wars collab but if you like this video please like and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one